Good afternoon, it's Jeff here at Budroom. Uh, this afternoon I just want to make a video about these paper wasps. They're on my back veranda up on the up on the pergola. I'm wearing my bee suit and my veil and my gloves. Uh, I put my, I'm only about probably about oh, one foot six, probably about four fifty uh, four fifty millimeters away from these these wasps. So they're just going about their business undisturbed. They're not worried about me. But if I was to really you know, brush past them, or I'm sure I'd get a sting if I wasn't protected. Um, now, as a part-time beekeeper, I get a lot of calls about bees, uh, bee problems, and I get a lot of call outs. And uh, anyway, a couple of years ago, a lady called me out to uh, get rid of a beehive, uh, which she thought was a beehive, and it turned out it was a paper wasp nest. And they uh, were uh, quite big. They had a nest like a mushroom. And uh, oh, they were probably about five or six times the physical size of these little little fellas. And uh, they were a paper wasp. Anyway, I had to dis I, I did destroy them for, for, for the lady. And uh, anyway, what I when I got home, I just I was keen to identify these wasps. So I got on the internet and did a lot of reading and research, and I just read and read and read for about five or six hours over a two-day period and I was just fascinated by what I read and um, I came away with the opinion after reading about wasps that they're probably more beneficial to us humans than what the honeybee is. You hear a lot of talk about a shortage of bees but nobody talks about a shortage of wasps and um, I think wasps are more beneficial um, now, for starters, all the wasp varieties, all the wasp species, are all nectar feeders, the adults. They're all nectar feeders. But they use different food sources for their larvae. Um, now, in, in Australia alone, in my research, um, I found that we have 12,000 species of wasp all ranging from about one millimetre in length to about 30 or 35 millimetres in length. Um, now you've got uh, wasps ranging from uh, parasite wasps to uh, gall wasps to paper wasp, mud wasps. You've got even got cuckoo wasps that do the same thing as a cuckoo bird. And um, but they've all got one thing in common, they're all nectar feeders, so they all pollinate our plants. So, uh, the other thing that we've got in Australia is 2,000 species of native bee. So they're also, uh, they also feed off nectar and uh, they use nectar. So they, they're all good pollinators as well. So I believe that what people are talking about when they talk about a shortage of bees I think they're talking about the European honeybee, uh, which is good. You know, we can use the European honeybee to gather the honey, and and they use it for crop pollination as well. But uh, but people, but a lot of people, as soon as they see a wasp nest, they just straight away they want to kill them, but um, or just de destroy them. If they're in a position where they're likely to sting you, well, it's probably wise to get rid of them or kill them but if they're in an out of the way place as these are uh, and you're not likely to get stung it's just best to to leave them there knowing that they're doing a lot of good what I noticed after doing my research because um, I grow my own vegetables and we're pretty well self-sufficient here and I just stand there hosing the garden sometimes and uh, just observing what's going on and since I did my reading, I noticed uh, you always see the odd wasp just patrolling around the vegetable garden, just looking. And uh, I'm assuming that what they're looking for is grubs and caterpillars to feed their larvae on. Um, what I uh, and since then I've noticed quite often you'll see 
uh, big piles of poo, you know, like in the brothel eye or in the sweet corn around the leaves and that, but there's no grub there. So I'm assuming that something like a wasp has uh, done his job and taken the grub away. So, um, you know, so the, the, the wasp has a twofold uh, advantage to us humans. The, number one, they're pollinating the, the plants and the flowers, and number two, they're gathering away, gathering up the uh, grubs and caterpillars, which are a pest. So they're doing a lot of good. Um, I think I've just about covered most of what I wanted to say. The only thing, well, the main thing I wanted to point out is if anybody's watching this video and uh, it might just change people's minds about killing uh, wasp nests around their house if, if they're in and out of the way place where they're not going to get stung. The other thing I read in my, my reading is that they believe that, that the Chinese um, invented paper through studying the paper wasp. And uh, the other thing I, I read is that they can use them, they can put cameras on uh, wasps and they can use them in the same way they, they use uh, sniffer dogs. So that was interesting to, to read about that. So uh, this, it's, I was just amazed to, to read about the uh, cuckoo wasps to, that do the same thing as the cuckoo bird and uh, all that sort of thing. And there's a fantastic uh, video on YouTube called Body Invaders about parasitic wasps and things like that. Anyway, well, uh, that's about covers my story about wasps. Okay, so well, uh, in, in conclusion, I just want to point out that uh, if anybody wants to be concerned about anything, um, just be concerned about the cutting down of the natural rain of na natural forest and uh, of the native forest, because because uh, native forest and native bushes where all these native species uh, breed up and habitat and, and uh, so rather than be concerned about a shortage of bees be more concerned about the cutting down of uh, native bush anyway thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you next time all the best bye